Hello and welcome back to another MLB The Show video. Today we're back on the Milwaukee Brewers' March to October. In the last episode, we had two moments involving sweeps. The first one, to not get swept, and the second one, to complete a sweep. We were successful in both of those, got some good momentum, and now our projected wins are all the way up to 100. We're 125 games into the season, almost into September, so we're really coming into the home stretch, and we've got a pretty healthy lead on the division. For this next key moment, we gotta go into this game against the St. Louis Cardinals. We're gonna have a five to four lead, and the goal is just to win a close game against the division rival. So I wouldn't expect too much positive momentum if we're able to complete this one since we already have the lead. But if we fail, then we might have a lot of negative momentum. So this, just like most moments, is a must win. Oh, this is a cool screen here. Usually I cut out these, uh, loading screens but we're getting a look at where we rank and everything second in home runs third in rbi sixth in average and then pitching wise fourth in era second in home runs allowed fourth in runs against that's a lot of good high ranking stats right there we're in a close contest here between division rivals and guys do players reach a little deeper in these matchups or should they maybe Hey, no doubt about that. A win against a division rival is much more valuable. In fact, in addition to gaining a game in your win column, you're also putting them one more behind in the loss column, which guarantees that your position in the standings is always improving. At the end of the season, it's these divisional rivals that you are measured up against. So absolutely, these are the games you definitely want to win. So we're stepping into the box with Travis Shaw to kick off this moment with a 5-4 to four lead. Looking to wrap this one up pretty quick so we can uh, so we can leave the boring city of St. Louis. <laughs> oh, and Travis Shaw is getting a hold of that one. And that's gone just over the wall into the first row. And that's a good way to start off this moment. This team in the last couple of couple of videos has been has been hitting pretty well. Put up a lot of runs. Travis Shaw almost to 30 homers on the season too. We've got Braun and Yelich who are both up over 30. Both of them are in the MVP race, but then Travis Shaw is right behind them with 29 homers now. He's not in the MVP race or anywhere near it, but he's still putting up big power numbers, and he's a big part of the team. And uh, just before anybody, if there are any Cardinals fans watching, first of all, surprised you'd be here. You know, it's a Brewers March to October. I wouldn't think you'd watch it. Second of all, I was joking about the boring thing. It was just a Chris Bryant joke. I don't know if St. Louis is boring or not. I've only been there once, and I was only there for a Cardinals game, and the game was kind of fun. So my experience hasn't been too boring. And Corbin Burns is still in this game. I didn't even realize that the starter was still in. But even though he's given up four runs, they still got him, and he's actually out of energy. So I didn't realize that this is probably his last batter. And he's getting a grounder to Shaw, and that's a good way to start this inning. I don't know, maybe I'll leave him in for one more batter and then bring in Claudio against the lefty after that. And Harrison Bader flying that one to right field. Yelich makes the play, and there's two down, and I think that one is going to bring Burns' day to a close with a lefty up. I'm just going to bring in Claudio. All right, yeah, Burns' day is done. 100 pitchers even. What would it be? Six and two thirds, seven and two thirds innings pitched? No, six and two thirds because he didn't get through the seven. I don't know why that always confuses me. It's so simple. But I'm going to play the matchup here with Alex Claudio. He's having a good year. He just doesn't seem to do that great when I use him. So I don't know. I, I want to try and get a little bit more used to him, and this seems to be a good situation to do it. Lefty, lefty with two outs in the inning and a two run lead. And he gets a pop-up to short, and Arcia makes a play. Arcia's defense has improved to get him up to that next tier. It went up to a 70, so he's got that silver under his name now, so that's cool to see. And Aguilar is getting hit on his first pitch of the at-bat, and this new pitcher's first pitch of the game, too. Oh, and he hit Thames now, too. It was a long at-bat, but... <laughs> That's the second guy in a row that this pitcher hit. 
I mean, it's the CPU, so who cares if it was intentional? But that was a breaking ball, so it doesn't look like it'd be intentional. I doubt this. I wonder. I don't think they would program the CPU to intentionally hit players. And Kane bloops that. It might get over his head. It does. But they might be able to turn a double play here. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, that's a tough situation. What do you, I mean, what are you going to do there? As Aguilar. Huh, I actually wonder what, what you... What would you be taught to do in that situation? Because you can't just go. Because you can't assume it's going to get down. Because then that would be a double play. But then as soon as it gets down, you have to run. But they threw it to second first and then tagged Aguilar out. Man, that is... That's a tough baseball situation there. I, there's not too many situations that stump me. You know, I'm pretty familiar with the game. I know I, I would like to say I know what to do in a lot of situations, but that that's a tough situation. I don't I don't see a good way of handling that as the runner on second. I mean, Aguilar kind of did all he could do. All right, we're bringing Jacob Barnes in, eighth inning man coming out again. He's still having a good year. It just seems like his stuff gets better every time. Down under a 1.5 ERA. Oh, and that one's hit pretty well. Marcelo Zuna gets out in front of that one. And Billy Hamilton not able to get it in on time to throw him out at second. So that's going to be a double. Oh, and he sits him down on a 3-2 count. Jacob Barnes clutch at bat there pitched and now the runner on second is there with two outs so it's going to take a little bit to get him home and there's another strikeout from Jacob Barnes a pretty clean eighth inning there out of him only giving up the one double but doesn't let him come around to score man that guy he does so well every time and Yelich gets that one into the left center gap that's going to be a double to lead off this top of the ninth. It'd always be nice to get some more insurance. And Travis Shaw is back up against a righty. We know what he did last time, that homer. And he does it again! The no-doubt homer over the bullpen, giving us two more runs in the top of the ninth. That's his 30th on the year, and he's gotten into a pretty exclusive club in the National League, but not a very exclusive club on our team. He's the third guy on our team to reach 30 homers, and I think league-wide there might only be like 10. And Harrison Bader pops up to the catcher. That should end the game, and it does. We beat the Cardinals 8-4, to four, do a pretty good job. I mean, our offense has just been so good in the last couple times I've used them. And, uh, yeah, that was a 8-4 to four win there. And that is a save for Jacob Barnes. I didn't realize that, but I guess since he came in in a save situation and everything, he gets the save for that one, and that's going to increase our momentum. Back to, I think, how it, at least what it looked like it looked after the last one. Is our next key moment in the next game? We don't even get a simulation in between? All right. Oh, that was weird. I don't know if that's ever happened before, but... We're literally playing the very next game against the Cardinals here, looking for the sweep. We're going to be in the bottom of the eighth with two outs, so that would mean that they're batting. Uh, so, yeah, bottom of the eighth, two outs against the Cardinals, looking to get the sweep. I'm going to go ahead and do that in this episode, so let's get right into it. We mentioned earlier that this game is a road sweep opportunity, and for more on that, let's go down to Heidi Watney. Well, we know in Major League Baseball how infectious the enthusiasm of winning can be. Coming through in this game to complete the series sweep would likely send this team's confidence soaring. And wouldn't it be satisfying to do it here on enemy turf, sending this home crowd away empty handed? Let's see if they can get it done. Good stuff, Heidi. Thanks. Wow, they showed a head to head for me, the Brewers, against the Cardinals this season. And it's been just utter dominance. <laughs> we were nine and three against the Cardinals with like a 280 average. Their average is in the 220s. Put up six and a half runs, only giving up like three and a half. And Zach Davies is still in this game. This guy, I don't, 
I don't know how to look at, you know, Cy Young races and award races in general, but I think Zach Davies might be in the race. Um, I know I haven't really shown league leaders, but Clayton Kershaw is running away with the Cy Young, so there's no way Davies gets the Cy Young, but he could be a runner-up if that's any kind of consolation. I honestly really want to get, I mean, obviously I want to get insurance runs, but not just because of the insurance itself, but I kind of want to give Davies an opportunity at getting a complete game here. But if I only have a one run lead, I'm probably going to want to bring Hater in. But if I can push the lead up to two or, or even higher, I'll definitely give Davies a chance to complete the game. I might give him a chance to do it anyway, but I'd just feel a lot more confident if I had more of a lead. And Braun strikes out. He was two for two on the day, and I came in and ruined it for him. And I guess this is where we have to make... Uh, it's not where we have to make the decision, but Davies is up at the plate. I'm probably going to let him hit. Yeah, I'm going to let Davies hit. I'll at least try to get him the complete game, because I know they do have a lot of uh, righties up next inning anyway. So, you know, if you play the matchup, it works out better than Hater anyway, but Davies gets a single down the line. So we didn't even need to pinch hit for him. He's doing it all on his own. And Ben Gamble doesn't seem to get too many uh, appearances in this March to October. But off the bench, he's a really good player batting 341. Today he's got a triple with three RBI. So he's actually driven in every single run so far. But I, f I feel like he's the king of the double play whenever he's in the game for me. But not this time. He slaps that one the other way. It's going to be another single move at station to station. Now we got runners on first and second with one out. And I think Yelich up? No, we got Arcia up. <laughs> Even better, in my opinion. Oh, no, Arcia. Oh, they bobbled it, though. They're only going to get one out? Yeah, Arcia was able to run that one out. Good hustle there to get to first. But unfortunately, he did get the out at second. But we're lucky he bobbled it because that would have been an easy double play. But now we have a chance to get that run in with Yelich. Oh, and Yelich does it. He gets that one just past the first baseman, Goldschmidt. And we do end up getting an insurance run. So this one goes to 4-2. to two, And Zach Davies is definitely going to at least get a chance to complete this game now. Well, it's not a homer, but that's going to be a single up the middle. I'm actually going to keep Arcia at third. He would have definitely been gunned down. So we're going to we're gonna give ourselves a chance to score another run. But Travis Shaw coming through there with a single. And I don't know who's up next. Billy Hamilton, all right. And he delivers. That's going to be a single. I am going to send Yelich, though. And he gets in there. There's a two RBI single. Boosting this lead up to 6-2. to two. I can't believe how many runs I'm scoring in these last couple of episodes when I come into the game. But this offense is just going off. And Moustakas hits that one pretty hard, but it's not going to get over his head out there and right. But we do put up three that inning, and Davies is going to go for his complete game. And Davies gets DeYoung striking out on the curveball below the zone that's his ninth strike out of the game he is pitching a gem ah uh, he did not get fooled by that curveball it kind of hung a little bit and Ozuna's gonna get a double here he's just he's just killing the fun man that's two doubles for Ozuna in these last two games uh, and that one's gonna get hit out to right they're not going to go home, but I will throw it there because I doubt Molina's going to take second. And there's the strikeout of Colton Wong. Even after a shaky ninth, Zach Davies able to complete the game in this one. Ten strikeouts on the day, and we're only getting we're only getting one flame ball. But whatever, we we didn't even use our uh, our flame balls in any simulations in between these moments. So an extra flame ball is basically how we got to look at it so we successfully completed another sweep this time it was the cardinals that fell victim and now we've got a pretty sizable flame ball we did drop a game there though to the to the diamondbacks but we swept the cardinals again and now it looks like we're going into play against the cubs starting off this series 
and we got to get a win to keep the streak alive. I think the streak is at five games because I think we lost to the di- or the yeah the Diamondbacks and then one two and then swept. So I think our current win streak is at five. This next moment wants us to uh, win this next game to keep that streak alive. Our projected wins up to 102. And look at this this recent trend on this graph. I think, I mean, obviously it's pretty simple. Every time the line goes completely horizontal, that means there's a loss. So over however many games that's been, we've only had two losses. Our our season's going pretty well here in the final stretch. And I can't, you know, just compute the magic number off the top of my head, but with a 14 game lead in the division, I think we got to be pretty close to clinching this one. We've got a month left to go. Uh, we got to face the Cubs in the next one. So if we beat them, that just knocks them down another game. But that is going to do it for this episode. We got two nice wins there against the Cardinals. Got the sweep. And in the next one, we're going to be facing off against the Cubs. And we got to come back in that one. Actually, a deficit to overcome. But if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button if you don't want to miss any more Brewers March to October in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button. But that's it for me in this episode, and I will see you in the next one.